Hello, hello! Today we're going to take a quick look at using the autopilot in an aircraft. So what is an autopilot? Well, it's a system which is used to control the trajectory of a plane without constant hands-on control by a pilot. Now there's an important distinction I need to make. While we have the technology nowadays to completely automate an aircraft's flight, in commercial aviation a pilot will always remain in control of the plane. They merely use the autopilot as an assistant. This allows the pilot to concentrate on other aspects of flying, such as communication and navigation. So what can an autopilot do? Well, pretty much anything nowadays. Take the good old space shuttle for example. Almost the entire re-entry procedure, where the shuttle came flying back from space into Earth's atmosphere, was computer controlled. The spacecraft also had the ability to land itself, however a pilot usually took manual control before a touchdown. So let's cover some of the autopilot functions in the Cessna first, and then we'll look at a couple more in the Boeing 737. So, here we have the autopilot panel sitting at the bottom of the radio stack here. There's two main components, the display and the controls or the buttons. So let's start on the left and work our way across. AP stands for the autopilot master switch. This enables or disables all autopilot functions. The master switch will need to be on for any function to work. Alternatively, if you switch on any of the other functions, it will automatically enable the master switch. When turning it off, you'll receive an audible warning like so. HDG is the heading hold, where the aircraft will turn to a heading determined by the pilot. In the Cessna, the heading is controlled by the position of the heading bag, this little orange indicator on the heading instrument. Nav. This will cause the aircraft to follow radio navigation or a planned GPS route. I'll cover radio navigation in a future video where we look at these instruments along the side of the radio stack and also how to navigate with radio frequencies. If you plan a flight in the FSX flight planner, it will give you a preset route to fly which will be available in the GPS. And by using the nav switch along with the GPS mode here in the cockpit, the plane will fly the entire route automatically. But again, that's something I'm planning to cover in a future video. APR stands for Approach Hold. This will cause the plane to automatically fly an approach to a runway if the runway has the correct radio equipment installed, an ILS system. This will allow the plane to follow the localizer, which is like an imaginary extension of the runway center line, and also the glide slope. That's an uh, ideal downward slope to approach the, uh, the runway there. REV stands for the reverse or the back course hold. This works very similar to the approach hold, however it will follow the opposite side of the localizer signal. This is not used often in modern flight, but an example of when it might be used is when an airport only has ILS installed at one end of the runway and not both ends. ALT stands for altitude hold, and it's quite self-explanatory. You can set an altitude and the aircraft will climb or descend to that altitude and remain at that height. The last sort of feature here which works with the altitude is the VS or vertical speed and this can be changed to control the climb or the descent speed. The up and down buttons on the side here simply allow you to adjust the altitude on the display. Now let's look at a couple of features which you'll find on a more complex aircraft such as a Boeing 737. Working left to right again, let's look at the features that you won't find in the Cessna. The course. Here you can enter the course direction. Remember back in Dead Reckoning we discovered that course and heading can be different values. Here you have an opportunity to use them separately. I'll cover this in more detail again when I cover radio navigation. The circle with the yellow icon is simply the knob used to change the number. FD is the flight director switch. This will draw command bars or crosshairs on the attitude indicator and is a visual guide to aid the pilot when flying. These will move depending on the values entered in the autopilot. The pilot can choose to continue flying manually using the flight director as an aid. AT arm, this stands for the auto throttle. Essentially this is like the autopilot master switch but it's for the engines. This allows the onboard computers to control the plane's engines and speed. To the right of that you have the speed display showing indicated airspeed. Use the white knob below it to change the number you want to fly at. The black button there changes the display from knots to a Mach number in case the pilot chooses to operate at a fraction of Mach 1 for example. Underneath those you have the N1 and speed switches. 
Enabling the speed switch will get the plane to hold the speed defined in the display above it, and it will automatically adjust the throttle to maintain that speed. For example, if you climb or descend, the plane will increase or decrease the throttle to make sure it stays at that same speed. Alternatively, you can set the throttle to a certain percentage. This is what N1 is for. N1 relates to the low pressure compressor in a jet engine. Basically, this is the fan, the fan structure that you see at the front of a jet engine. The speed that spins at is usually measured as a percentage, so if the throttles were set to halfway, the N1 would be 50. You can flick the N1 switch to hold a certain throttle speed. The knob to control this is actually down here underneath the autopilot panel, and you can see what the setting is with the green numbers above the instrument, sorry, the engine instrument readout. Under the heading readout, we have the knob used to select the heading and also the bank angle selector. This tells the autopilot to turn at 10, 20 or 30 degrees of bank angle. Why would you need to change this? Well, shortly after takeoff and before landing, a pilot may be guided by air traffic control and in a busy airspace, like over a city for example, they may need to make sharper turns. But when they get up into a cruise, they want to keep their passengers comfy, so they'll change it to 10 degrees so they can make gentle turns. VOR lock is basically the nav switch from the Cessna and it will be used with radio navigation, again, that's something I'll cover in a future video. And the last unfamiliar one, CMDA, is actually the autopilot master switch in this plane. For any of the autopilot functions to work, this needs to be switched on. So let's jump into the Cessna and look at a couple of these functions in action. Okay, so here we are, flying along in the Cessna. Uh, I'm going to use the 2D cockpit just because it's a little bit clearer so you can see what I'm doing and what I'm changing on the uh, on the sort of controls there. So I'm currently flying along manually at 1,500 feet. The plane's kind of just about trimmed out there. Um, so first I want to show you the heading hold. If you look at the uh, the heading indicator down here, you can see that little heading bug, this orange uh, little orange indicator there, is pointing to 060. So that's the heading that I want to turn to. So what I do is go over to the autopilot and just click on the heading button and then the plane will automatically flick on the autopilot master switch and turn to a heading of 060, like so. So you can see HDG show up in the display and the plane is turning itself. And it will roll out nice and gently right on the heading of 060. Now, rather than uh, turning the heading hold off changing the uh, the heading and turning it back on, what you can do is just simply change the heading and the plane will automatically follow it. So, let's say we want to head due east, just go down to here to the little heading bug control and we'll change it to east. There we go. And you see the plane immediately follows that and turns straight away and then rolls out on that heading. So, uh, the other sort of common one that you use most often in the Cessna will be the altitude hold. So, uh, if you have a look down here at the uh, autopilot again, you'll see that I've dialed in 2,000 feet on the altitude uh, there. So, all we simply do is just hit the altitude button and the plane will start to climb. Now, you can see the vertical speed underneath now has changed to 700. That means we're going to climb at a rate of 700 meters per second. It's kind of steep for a Cessna, so all you would simply do to adjust that is just click on the numbers in the display and you can adjust it. So I'll just dial it down a little bit just now. And see that as I change that, the plane started pitching down slightly just to account for that um, that lower uh, sort of vertical speed there. And it works in the opposite direction as well. So uh, what I'll do is I'll let the plane climb up to 2,000 feet just so you can see the other plane will level off when we hit that altitude. And you can see the nose just pitching down slowly now. The vertical speed indicator here is getting less and less right as we close in on 2000. We've gone ever so slightly over it, but the plane will sort of take it, that into account. And as I said, it's the same for descending, so what I'll do is I'll change the uh, the altitude hold down to 1,000 feet, 
and then I'll make an adjustment on the uh, vertical speed again. And then you can see the vertical speed when we're descending, the vertical speed actually displays as a negative number, so negative 500 feet per minute. And uh, yeah, those are the two sort of most common or the, the two autopilot commands you'll be using most often in the uh, Cessna. Okay, so there's one last thing I want to cover briefly just before I wrap this video up, um, and that's just uh, something that you need to be aware of, possibly a danger when you're flying using the autopilot, um, is that the autopilot, you, you need to remember to fly within the limits of the aircraft, and I'll, I'll show you what I mean. So at the moment I'm flying uh, using the heading and the altitude hold at 2,000 feet. What I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and climb up to 3,000 feet at a rate of 1,000 feet per minute. However, once I start the climb, I'm going to reduce the throttle to idle. Now, if I was flying manually, this would cause the plane to stall. The autopilot is a bit smarter, so it won't let that happen, but I'm just going to show you what happens just so you, you can see what and be aware of it when you, uh, when you decide to fly using the autopilot. So, going up to 3,000 feet. Um, increase to 1,000 feet per minute. And so you can see the plane is now climbing, and we'll just throw it to idle. So you can see the speed's coming down, and you can also see the vertical speed. It's not climbing at 1,000 feet per minute like we want it to. And as I said, the autopilot is smart, so it's not going to let the plane stall. You can see that's why it's dropping the nose there. However, you've told the plane to try and climb. Um, in a way that it can't. So now all the autopilot is doing is just preventing the plane from stalling. As you can see we're now descending at about five, 500 feet per minute. So it's just something to be aware of uh, if you're using the autopilot is that you do need to continue to fly the plane within its limits. So that's a quick introduction to the most common autopilot functions. In my next video I'll be looking at air traffic control in more detail and quickly look at how to manipulate the radios as well. Hope to see you there, thanks for watching and I'll catch you later.